Okay, so we we start now with introduction to my material. Yeah? So this I think we have uh, yeah the course outline. I will upload to the Google Classroom. <coughs> so, so basically, materials are everywhere. Yeah, not only for my medical application, but in our daily life, in our surrounding, there are many different types of material. For example, here, these are three different materials used to contain uh, drink, yeah, to contain beverage. The first one here, <clears throat> when the material is contained in uh, aluminum, okay, in metal, in aluminum metal can. Then we have here the glass ceramics. Yeah, we have here the glass ceramics where in bottle. Okay, so glass is basically a type of ceramics. Yeah, it is uh, <clears throat> the so here the material is aluminum, aluminum can, which is type of metal, and this one it has glass. Glass is basically a compound, uh, a compound, but not in the crystalline state, but in the amorphous state, containing uh, silicon dioxide. This is the most common uh, type of glass, but however, it is not usually pure. It has some other uh, impurities yeah, introduced. For example, could be uh, sodium carbonate, could be also, uh, what else? Uh, potassium, uh, calcium etc and this one yeah which is now more common plastic bottle yeah, plastic bottle is also the type of polymer yeah this is plastic <clears throat> usually what you have there could be pet polyethylene terephthalate yeah uh, or if it is stronger bottle then it could be made from pp yeah, or poly polypropylene polypropylene so this is all types of polymer. So, <clears throat> of course, each one has different characteristics. Yeah. But you know how uh, they 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 look like, and how they know, you you can feel what what they are. Yeah, it's a can, for example, they are transparent. Sorry, they are non-transparent. They are opaque from optical point of view. They are uh, softer. Yeah. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you can crush the can, yeah, of course, after it is emptied. Then you have the glass, which is harder, but when it drops, it breaks easily. So it is fragile. We call it that material property as fragility, yeah, fragile. Then we have plastics. Plastic here, which is uh, the softest, maybe, among the three, yeah, but it is cheap. Yeah, it, it is also can be easily a bendable of, or, or a brick or, or we call it crush. So you see here all the three to perform the same uh, the same function. Yeah, to uh, to to contain a drink, to contain water, or to contain a beverage. But each different property, each has different property, and depending of the function you want to have, of course, you will use different material. So I've mentioned a little bit yeah, during introduction of the subject that <clears throat> what in this engineering material and biomedical material, as well as other material science and engineering, what importance are these four things? Yeah, processing, structure, properties, and performance. And the arrow shows how one factor affect the other so it all come back from the processing actually before the processing you also have the material choice itself yeah, what materials you choose but then how you process them yeah, how you process them will determine how the material structure will be so even if it were the same chemical compound or the same chemical substance but if you process differently they may have different structure yeah so this is what is what makes material science or engineering 
different than chemistry. It's in, in chemistry, you are more concerned towards the structure of the molecule, right? This, how how the, the, the molecule structure look like here. Yeah? <clears throat> so at the molecular level, but when molecule is arranging with one another to make a larger structure, become the material itself, become solid material. In this case, in the material sense, we are talking about solid state material. Then what is important is the processing. <clears throat> so in chemistry, the structure of the molecule depends mostly on the chemical substances itself that you react to one another. Okay. Then which then also depends on the temperature and other things. But in material science, the development of the larger scale structure also depends on different trip treatment, including physical treatment. So including, for example, what we call as forging, applying some mechanical stress to the, to the material so that the structure of the crystalline solid will change. Of course, thermal processing is included, either, either cooling or heat treatment. And recently, many other types of other uh, processing. So this, this will determine the structure. And the structure later will determine the properties, whether you will have a transparent or opaque structure, for example opaque material, yeah, whether it is transparent to, to light or not. If it is transparent to light, at which we reflect. These are all dependent on the structure of the material, whether they are conductive or not. This is all depend also on the structure. Whether they are strong enough towards a certain mechanical, uh, mechanical stress or not. It is will depend on the structure. So then eventually, it will determine the performance of that material as for particular application. So later when you are uh, acting or functioning as a biomedical material, yeah, of biomedical engineer, of course you have to understand based on the requirement of the application, what, <clears throat> what, are, uh, what requirement does a particular application have? For example, if you would like to develop a biodegradable one-time medical sutures, yeah, that can degrade over time, it means that that material, for example, has to be degradable, has to be flexible enough, has to be uh, non-interactive with the surrounding tissue, uh, does not uh, what do you call it, does not uh, incite immunological reaction, etc., etc. So based on this requirement which in the performance, then you determine the properties. So if it is flexible, then how do you that, how do you mention that flexibility in terms of mechanical science, yeah, mechanical property in the, in the terms of Young's modulus or elongation, whatever. From there, then you determine what structure that, that material should have. From there, after you know the structure, then you determine the correct processing, the correct manufacturing. So <clears throat> in the material itself, this figure 1.1 is how the relationship occurs yeah, between this uh, processing. But in when you are implementing it as a biomedical engineer, then what you are, uh, you move from the front. So you move from the side, deciding what performance your, your application will be. From there, you determine the properties of the materials that your application should have. From the properties, then you determine the structure, then you determine the processing. Yeah. So you know that these three are basically of the same material type. What material are they? Any idea? Yeah, Grace. What are these three? Um, plastic, pa. Plastic. Is it um bottle cap? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> no, it is not. They are not plastics. They are glass. 
Oh, okay. Okay, they are uh, uh, I think type of lens or yeah, something like that. But because they are processed differently, they have three different properties. Okay, this one is very optically transparent, right? It can transmit any light through it, so that then we can read the letter behind it. The second one, what we call is diffuse optical property. Diffuse optical property means that it can transmit light, but it will diffuse the light everywhere, so that then we cannot we it, it, we can still see that something is there behind it, but we cannot clearly read. Yeah, the letter behind. So this is this material usually you have in uh, some of the bathroom or toilet. Yeah, these glasses. Uh, it is blur. Yeah, so the light can still go through for lighting properties. Yeah, so so that the the rooms can still bright, can still be bright. However, uh, you cannot see through. Yeah. The light can still go through, but you cannot see through. You cannot see what is the other on the other side. Yeah, you know there is something, but you cannot see clearly, right? This is diffusive, uh, optically diffusive structure. The last one, on the other hand, is opaque material. Yeah, opaque material means that the light light cannot go through at all. It is the light is just being blocked, absorbed by this structure. So they are basically the same material, but prepared differently, which will make their properties different. So this is why processing is important. With having different types of processing, you will have different structure. With different structure, the properties will be different. And then they will perform differently, which will function differently based on what application you want to use that material in. This one shows an example of <coughs> a failure in material. Yeah, a failure in material. So the engineers do not design them properly. Yeah, because it is too long. If the material, if the ship here is made very long, it will need to endure what we call as bending stress, bending strain. Yeah, and the, the material has to be calculated such that it has enough strength to endure such bending stress. In this case, it wasn't designed properly. In that case, that's why when it is launched in the before even before launch in the shipyard, it breaks. Because maybe here it is too heavy, right? And there is also heavy here and it is too long and it just breaks. It is broken in the middle. There is a what you call starting from a crack, then it becomes failure, material failure. Yeah. Can you imagine if this happens inside your body? Yeah, this is this happens outside the body. Okay, there might not be any uh, victims that that victims from here, but imagine if you put a bone implant to replace yeah, one of the patient's bone, for example, then it is not designed properly. The structure, the property. Yeah, such that it cannot endure certain types of stress, then maybe it will fail. Then the result could be catastrophic for the patient. Okay, well, so you, when as a biomedical engineer, you have to design carefully. You have to know where that particular implant will be located in, inside the patient's body. Will it be in the, for example, to replace femur, femur implant, the thigh? Yeah? Or will it be used to replace the knee or the hip? In this case, this, all these three will have to endure the weight of the patient's body as well as the physical activity. Yeah? If it is in the leg, then it has to endure the physical activity, the stress during the walking, the running maybe of the patient. So you have to carefully design the stress. From, from, from there, you can know <coughs> the material characteristic, material property. From there, you can determine what structure it should have, what material it should have. And after then, the processing that that implant should be made. Yeah. So 
let's go through some of the uh, in a glance some of later we will go in more detail in later chapters so the first is this is the comparison between the four main material types in terms of their density at room temperature yeah so as we can see metals has among the highest density of material yeah platinum for example has 20 gram per centimeter cubic or 20 kilogram per meter cubic but it uh, it has also the lowest yeah uh, the lowest Ma uh, density of material which is the, mag the magnesium magnesium is one of the lightest material the light material because it is in the second group platinum is in the noble metal group okay we have in the in between them aluminum like the one that used for the beverage can that is why it is soft because it the, the density is not that big we have titanium quite hard yeah used also for bone implant then we have the <coughs> silver copper and iron steel. then ceramics has a narrower variation of density yeah among the highest density is the zirconia the zirconium oxide then we have alumina and silicon carbide and silicon nitride this is one of the hardest but hardest doesn't mean also the highest density you have to later differentiate between density and other mechanical properties of the material then glass glass even though it breaks easily it has relatively high density yeah about here three uh, gram per centimeter cubic or three kilogram three thousand kilogram per meter cubic then concrete yeah concrete then polymers polymers is the softest yeah the the it has the one of the uh, lowest density among the types of material ptfe pvc polyphenylchlorine es polystyrene pe polyethylene and rubber rubber is the lowest yeah. uh, so that is why many polymers can just float in the water because their density is lower than water composites on the other hand has more variation because composite are made from combination of these three which have depending on what properties of material you want to have yeah gfrc glass fiber reinforced concrete cfrc carbon fiber reinforced concrete and woods these are the range of the properties. This is stiffness, or we call it elastic modulus. Yeah, elastic modulus is uh, how easy it is that we can. Later on, we will study here. Or this is the Young's modulus. Usually, is defined as the how easy it is to bend, uh, to stretch a material. Yeah, this is Young's modulus. Young's modulus. This is what we call a stress. Yeah, usually it is force divided by the surface area of where that force is being applied, and this is strain. Strain is the elongation. Yeah, the elongation over the initial slang. So this is the definition of stiffness. Young's modulus. So metal, of course, usually has the highest stiffness because it is very difficult to stretch metal. They are very rigid. So it is basically the opposite of flexibility. Yeah, rigid, rigidity. Yes, as high modules, stiff, stiff or rigid. Yeah, um, except for example, the, the lower density metal like aluminum and magnesium, they are more flexible. Then ceramics, most ceramics usually are very stiff. Yeah, you can and any glass, ceramic pottery, very difficult for you to stretch them or to compress them. Polymers, on the other hand, has the lowest Young's modulus. That's why it is easy to very easy to stretch them, especially the rubber. Rubber is the one that is very has the lowest Young's modulus. 
That's why even with small stress, you can have long strain. You can have high strain, long elongation. Composite, on the other hand, can vary. The, 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 the stiffness of composite can vary depending on what material you combine them. This is the strength. So this, there's a difference. Yeah? The strength is <clears throat> the how strong the material is before it go, it fails, before it cracks, before it uh, fails. Fails means when the structure becomes broken. Broken. Okay? Metals has a variation also of their strength depending on what types of metal, what types of mixture of metal. Ceramics. Is usually has the highest, very high strength. Yeah, silicon nitride, especially is the highest. This is can you can be used for drilling, drill bit. Yeah, the, the the eye of the drill bit. Yeah, silicon carbide is also very hard, very hard. The highest the the highest uh, strength among them is the the the, the diamond, the diamond uh, material material it is a type of ceramics as well then polymer usually has the lowest strength it is that's why it is easily bendable it is easily crackable yeah like uh, plastics everything then composite here has a wide variation of strength depending on the material that makes the composite okay This is resistance to fracture, or we call it fracture toughness. This is just the point yeah, in, in the unit is in uh, megapascal. It's of, yeah, because this is megapascal is uh, the stress, yeah, the stress. The point of stress before it breaks. Yeah, so metals has the highest. Ceramics, on the other hand, is low. Why is it? Here, we, we, it has the highest strength, but why it is not tough towards fracture? Yeah, as you can see, when with ceramics, when you uh, throw them to the floor, for example, with glass, they break easily, right? They are hard. They are very difficult to bend. They are very difficult to stretch. Yeah, even it is not bendable at all. With metals, on the other hand, it is bendable, malleable. It can be formed easily. With ceramics, you cannot. However, when you throw them, they break easily. So this is what makes it different. This is resistance to fracture, or we call it fracture toughness. Polymer even has, some polymers has higher fracture toughness compared to ceramics. This is, as you can see, that concrete has the lower, lowest uh, Fracture toughness. So when earthquake happens, when the usually in buildings that is built entirely from concrete or from clay, yeah, they breaks easily. Okay, how to reduce? But yeah, it is strong, but they breaks easily because you are putting it to with in during the earthquake. It is vibrating. Different the stress is on many directions, so it breaks easily. How to prevent that breaking the, the, the building from failure? Usually then they put composite structure. They put, for example, different types of fiber inside the concrete material yeah, to make it stronger. This is also actually the, the reason why you need to have the steel skeleton yeah, in, the, in the concrete building. The steel skeleton strengthen the building structure. If you build this brick, the building entirely from concrete, it will break easily, even when the earthquake is very small. Then you have polymer, yeah, even high, uh, long, uh, stronger to toughness compared to ceramics. Then composite has a wide variation of uh, fracture toughness. Okay, moment. Sorry. Good. Let's stop a little bit. Uh, lecture. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay.
So we have compared the properties of the four materials for on the room temperature density, the stiffness, yeah, or Young's modulus, then strength, temperature strength, then cell strength, then uh, fracture toughness for various metals or ceramics, <clears throat> polymers, yeah, and composite material. Then this one is the electrical conductive on the electrical conductivity range, yeah. So as we have experience, of course, in our daily life. Excuse me. Metals have the highest electrical conductivity among all. So most of our electronics are made of metal. Yeah? The electrical wire, the cable, copper wire are metal. Then semiconductors. Semiconductor can be actually classified as ceramics, but a special type of ceramics. Most, semi, uh, for example, semiconductor like silicon dioxide uh, or silicon, yeah? it, is, it is basically can be considered as ceramics. However, it has been modified so such that it has more electronic impurity so that it can, uh, <clears throat> it can what? Convey or uh, propagate electrons yeah, in its structure. And while most of the ceramics, on the other hand, they have low conductivity, low electronic conductivity. Yeah, they be they behave as an insulator. Yeah, for example, uh, as an enclosing. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> in furnace, furnace uh, the the closure is mostly made of ceramics because they are also thermally insulative. Polymer is also has. Uh, low conductivity, low electrical conductivity. Although some polymer can be made a little bit conductive yeah, uh, compared to the common polymers. Okay. <clears throat> so, what are these made of, this material? Anyone? Andy? Andy, are you there? Yes, sir. What are this thing made of? Um, metals. Metals. Yeah. Okay. Anjali, what are this material made of? What are this thing made of? What kind of material makes this material? Ceramics. Ceramics. Correct. Yeah. So this is ceramic. This is ceramic. This is scissor. The the sharp part yeah? this is a special type of scissor not metallic scissor but ceramic scissor okay the the holder of course is usually made from polymer but this style is made from ceramics this uh, cup also made from ceramics ezra what is this made of what are these made of polymers polymers yeah you see in even in polymer you, you have soft polymer like the one used for this plastic spoon, as well as for this uh, bottle. But you have a little bit hard polymer yeah? uh, uh, with high strength, like this one used for the head of biker, yeah? bicycler. OK, so we mentioned a little bit about semiconductor. So actually, there are, if I would classify, they are basically ceramics, but they have a little bit advanced property. Semiconductor maybe have just been invented or maybe properly mentioned as discovered in the mid of 20th century. So their electrical properties are intermediate between insulator and conductor, between electrical conductor like metal or metal alloys and insulator like ceramics and polymer. So in normal room temperature, they, they usually do not conduct electricity, but with, when the temperature is elevated or increased, they can start to conduct electricity, electrons. <clears throat> if we want them to conduct at room temperature, usually we have to introduce impurity, other materials, so that they have then excess charge carrier. We call it charge carrier, or uh, either it is hole or uh, hole is carries uh, positive 
uh, charge, while electrons carries uh, negative charge. So the electrical characteristics of this material are extremely sensitive to the presence of many concentration of impurity atoms, for which the concentration may be controlled over very small spatial regions. Okay. Then we have bimaterials. Yeah, this is <clears throat> components implanted into the human body to replace disease or damaged body parts. These materials must not produce toxic substances yeah, and must be compatible with body. We call it this as biocompatibility. So it means that it should not cause adverse biological reaction. For example, by compatibility, by the immune system in our body. So all of the preceding materials, metal, ceramics, polymers, composite, and semiconductor may be used as biomaterial. Then also there is a new class of materials called, called as the smart materials. This is a group of new and state-of-the-art materials now being developed that will have a significant influence on many of our technology. Yeah. Uh, why? Because they, they usually is responsive towards information. Yeah. In sensor and measurement, you uh, are learning about information and how it is being transformed from one domain to another, right? And until recently, most materials are just used for their structure, yeah, as I mentioned earlier. Processing, structure, property or characteristic, and then performance. But then people start to develop this kind of smart material where it can also transform or convert information from one domain to another. So there are smart materials that can function as sensor, yeah, where it can detect input signal and then behave accordingly, or as actuator, where it will perform responsive and adaptive function. So actuators may be uh, called upon to change shape, position, its natural frequency of vibration, mechanical characteristic, yeah, in response to the surrounding environment parameter like temperature, electrical field, or magnetic field. So these are, for example, of actuator, smart material, shape memory alloys, yeah, or SMA. So these are alloy. Alloy means mixture of solid material, metals usually. And these are the uh, uh, alloy that can remember its shape. So when you bend it, or uh, what do you call it? Um, transform its shape, after a while, it can come back to its original shape. Okay. <clears throat> Piezoelectric ceramics, this is material that you will learn also here in the sensor and measurement class. Material that can convert stress into electricity and vice versa, electricity into mechanical stress or mechanical force. Then magnetostrictive material. This is between magnetic domain and mechanical domain. Electro-rheological, magnetorheological fluids. These are fluid, they are liquid that whose uh, viscosity can change when you apply different electrical fields or magnetic field. Okay, then we we come to the application of biomedical materials yeah, in our uh, into the med uh, medical world from the top of our head yeah until until the tools in our leg yeah many materials have been implemented have been applied yeah, for different implant purposes for example here as a hydrocephalus sans contact lenses yeah usually they are made from polymer maxillofacial implant yeah, to replace the bone in our jaw for dental restoration, this is usually made from ceramics. Dental implant also usually from ceramics. Tracheal uh, implant, central nervous catheter, breast implant from polymer, vascular implant either from metal, yeah, uh, the hard ring, or from other things. Yeah. Wound repair closer, IV catheters, urological stents. 
and catheters, drug delivery system, what else? Uh, biliary stents, orthopedic implant, yeah, this uh, hip replacement, also there is a uh, knee, re knee replacement, small joint implants, etc., etc., hemodialysis product. All needs, all of them need uh, the, the application of certain materials, yeah, biomedical materials. Okay, let's uh, discuss a little bit about the biocompatibility aspect. So the biocompatibility is the interaction of the material with the surrounding tissue. So when you implant a material into your body, then it will interact with the surrounding cell. It will also interact with the muscles or ligaments. Then with the fat. Then with the bones and then the organs also. So this interaction include chemical interaction, mechanical interaction, also pharmacological interaction, then surface interaction. Yeah. So that's why chemically the the the, the, meta, the implant may be corroded by the surrounding uh, chemicals from the, the body, so that then it will it can also degrade. So we call we we know um, implant which is called as a, a inert uh, inert implant inert. So most of the traditional implant usually they have to be inert or biologically inactive. Biologically inactive means that they do not they should not make any reaction with the surrounding tissue in the host body. Yeah, so like uh, titanium, titanium usually is very inert. So that is why it is used as very strong uh, orthopedic implant. But sometimes in we, we, we want the implant to be degradable, like in the case of surgical suture, yeah, the one that uh, you some of you would like to make. This need to degrade so 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 that then there is no need for secondary surgery to take it out. So can we make a suture that can heal the wood as well as it can degrade by itself into the human body? Yeah. So this is like the opposite of the inner implant. We call it biodegradable material, biodegradable implant. Yeah. Uh, sometimes this other interaction, encapsulation, thrombus formation, calcification, thus toxic bleaching, embrittlement. Embrittlement means that it becomes brittle after certain period of time, the implant becomes brittle and then breaks. Of course, we do not want to have such uh, embrittlement. Cell lysis, where it reacts with cell to destroy the cell. Systemic reaction, it reacts with the circulatory system of blood, so that then it may cause, for example, toxicity and other things. Okay. Requirement for a bone plate for stabilizing. This is an example of the application of biomedical materials in orthopedic. Stabilizing a fractured femur after an accident. So usually in this in this form, yeah, we have this screw as well as a plate like this. So when when a person has accidents, there is many fractures. In order to uh, heal the bone, usually the orthopedic doctor will put this plate to make everything intact in and then screw. And, and then after certain uh, period of time, and then with X-ray, the doctors will evaluate whether it has healed or not. If it has healed, then you will do a secondary surgery to take out this plate. Yeah. So that's why it is important to know the acceptance of the plate to the tissue surface. This is the biocompatibility. Yeah, and which includes the points two and three here, which is pharmacological acceptability. Acceptability is the implant non-toxic, does not cause any toxic to the body. Is it non-allergenic, non-immunogenic, non-carcinogenic, etc. Should not cause cancer, should not cause immune reaction, including this allerg allergy reaction. And it should also be chemically inert and stable. 
no time dependent degradation as i mentioned in the previous slide it should have also adequate mechanical strength adequate static life and built with sound engineering design with proper weight and density and relatively inexpensive reproducible and easy to fabricate and process for large scale production our country has i think is already able to build this kind of uh, metallic implant yeah. so these are the class of material being used in the body some example like polymers include like nylon silicon rubber polyester ptfe polytetrafluoroethylene the advantages are they are resilient and easy to fabricate however they are usually not strong and they may degrade with time that is why they can be used for degradable application like sutures blood vessel and other soft tissue here yeah? artificial ear artificial nose should, uh, hip socket breast implant something like that metals like titanium and its alloy cobalt chromium gold silver stainless steel they are strong and tough and ductile ductile means they are formable yeah, after uh, during the processing they can be formed into various shape however some metal may corrode with time a corrode means reaction with the surrounding uh, chemicals or compound forming oxide for example that may de uh, easily degrade and diluted in the blood they are sometimes too dense yeah so means very heavy and then also difficult to make you need special foundry to make such uh, devices so they are used usually for joint replacement dental root implants pacer and suture wires also bone plates yeah, and screws then we have ceramics <clears throat> made from uh, example like alumina zirconia calcium phosphate including the hydroxy apatite this hydroxy apatite is the ceramic type which resembles uh, the structure of our bone they are very biocompatible yeah because most many of our body structure is made of ceramics as well like the bones especially yeah however the disadvantage is ceramics are brittle as i mentioned in the previous uh, session they breaks easily when you throw them to floor or to other plate hard material they will break this is called as brittleness not resilient and weak in tension they cannot elongate you when you when you elongate when you stretch 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 then breaks just break without elongation they are used in dental as and orthopedic implants then we have composite carbon carbon wire or fiber reinforced bone cement which is very strong tailor made yeah but they are uh, difficult to make yeah the composite is difficult to make because they consist of different types of material example like bone cement as well as dental resin so for biocompatibility requirement the system need to have uh, should not have you should not have uh, so we should put here should not have a good system systemic toxicity systemic toxicity means when the toxic it flows into the blood should not have cytotoxicity where it can uh, what do you call it cytotoxicity it can it is toxic towards the cell hemolysis where it breaks the blood yeah, the blood cells etc intravenous toxicity when it is toxic inside the vein mutagenicity so mean it can cause mutation which then may cause cancer oral toxicity this is the toxicity inside the mouth pyrogenicity uh, then where, where it can cause fire or sensitization you make it more uh, especially this can cause allergenic reaction so guidance for biocompatibility assessment you need to have material characterization identify the chemical structure of the material 
and potential toxicological hazard. The residue level, degradation product, etc. Information on prior use and previous usage. Is there any documented uh, documentation of those use, which would indicate the material suitability? Is there any toxicological data? Yeah. If known, biological tests. Then it is supported with other documents like the shape, size, form, time in contact, yeah. chemical breakdown of all toxicity data on this material when it is in direct contact with body tissue. Again, prior use and if there is any details of the effects. Then toxicity test. Yeah, so this is why when you have devices or drugs actually also, but we are more concerned with devices. If it is drug, it is the concern of pharmaceutical engineer. Eh? But as by American engineer, we are concerned with drugs, uh, sorry, with devices. Any devices implanted into our body, put inside our body, you have to do this preclinical tests and clinical tests okay to know this biocompatibility assessment to know its biocompatibility inside our body so these are the criteria so for each of those criteria it has different standard either iso or astm astm is american standard for the mechanical engineering for example, for the chemical composition, molecular weight, the handling property, physical property, and how it is being obtained. For example, either using light microscopy or using scanning and acoustical microscopy for porosity. Yeah. Uh, what else? Modulus of elasticity. How is it obtained using four point bending according to which standard ISO 5833? Okay, static strength, etc. etc. So this is some example of the surgical use of several biomaterials. In the musculoskeletal system, permanent implants are being used in joints, yeah, in shoulder, elbow, and wrist, as well as lower joints. Also in cardiovascular system, in the heart, as a artificial valve, wall, pacemaker, a pacemaker. The entire heart sometimes is a research on making artificial heart, implantable artificial heart. In the respiratory system, yeah, trunkia, larynx, bronchus, digestive system, stood filling, es es esophagus, liver, genitourinary system, or kidney, ureter, urethra and bladder, in the nervous system, and as for special senses, lens prosthesis, ear cochlear implant, yeah, this, is, this is where it already also involves electronic function, not only mechanical function. Carotid pacemaker. Then other soft tissues. And cosmetic implant. Yeah, this is for maxillofacial. Uh, what do you call it? For teeth. Some people has. Anyone knows the name? In their teeth. Braces. Yeah, braces. Yeah. So these are made from metal, right? Usually they are made from metal and for the purpose of cosmetic, basically, yeah, to make beautiful form of your teeth. Then this is permanent, means that they stay, well, well for the case of braces, it is not permanent, yeah, of course. but many of these are permanent. Including myself, for example, I have teeth implant yeah, I obtained when I was in Japan. So, they pull the doctor pulls and then put this a drill then put the the metallic implant inside biomaterial can be used also for transit implant yeah so for example uh, like this for the heart lung kidney usually as for the healing purposes external dressing and partial import implants artificial skin temporary artificial skin for example for burn wounds yeah people who have burned some part of their skin burn getting then it could be uh, healed using artificial skin temporarily to uh, stimulate the surrounding tissue skin tissue to grow and to cover the wound as aid to diagnosis your catheters inserted into the blood vessel 
and orthopedic fixation device as the, pre the previous example in previous slide plate and screw yeah to maintain the position of broken bone such that, that it can heal itself after it is healed then it is uh, taken away again <clears throat> so this is for example the use of screws orthopedic screws to fix fracture in the femoral neck yeah uh, the, the neck is broken here in this line so we the, the doctor the orthopedic put here yeah, so that it is fixed then to to initiate healing procedure after it is healed the screws will be taken away this one example for <coughs> spinal disc fusion yeah, spinal disc fusion to strengthen the back bone here to uh, to fuse the screw in the one of the parts of the backbone so that they are straightened again this graph shows the probability of implant failure and what could cause them so usually in the previous in the early years after the implantation the failure most of the time comes from infection yeah, infection because the surgery is not perfect and also when you have gap small gap micro gap between the implant and the surrounding tissue that can be a place for bacteria to grow and can cause infection after for example between five to ten years most of the failure due to loosening yeah uh, because there is no uh, clear bonding or addition between the tissue and that implant so the implant may loosen they may move slide sliding the tissue and this is not good as well for example for dental implant okay then in longer period of time after 10 years 15 years it the, the failure may be caused by fracture so when it is when the person is very active and then the implant may not handle long period of usage then it may break eventually or due to wear wear here for example due to friction in the case of total hip replacement for example yeah there is uh, it is there is a like this dome shaped cup and the, the other part of the bone is being like this the implant this is total hip replacement then this will there is a friction there's a sliding between the cup and the 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 ball bone so there, there is a specific surface engineering to make them wear resistant for long period of time. If not, then this will wear easily. Yeah. So this is this picture shows some examples of implant failure. Yeah, the first one is ruptured implant. This is I think breast breast implant. Yeah. Breast implant implanted into the breast from silicon. You know, silicon is a type of polymer when it is worse yeah. ruptured bone and then like this you don't want this to happen yeah and then tooth implant imperfection so for example here you see the cavity yeah the cavity here the cavity here in this region yeah and this is not good because this can be a place for bacteria to grow and this is fracture yeah this is fracture like this when it breaks it, is, it breaks so these are the history of the development of implant from the late 18th century various metal device used to fix fracture yeah iron gold silver and platinum late 19th century aseptic surgical technique then in the 20th century, many implant material are being invented. Yeah? Uh, different types of alloy, femoral neck fracture, uh, uh, stainless steel alloy. The first total hip replacement is by Wiles, 1938. Acrylic, this is polymer, yeah? acrylic is polymer or PMMA. Polymeta, uh, polymeta uh, I forgot the extension. 
for corneal replacement in 1940. The use of titanium and its alloy, blood vessel replacement made of clots, direct stimulation of the heart, the heart valve, this is by Stark and Edwards, 1960. Total heart replacement, 1970. Yeah, refined implant. Then the beginning of the 21st century witnessed the, the development of tissue engineering and nanoscale material. So this is the jaded prosthesis made from, I think, polymer. Yeah? Polymer for in, 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 uh, to, to connect between the hip and the femur. Oops. Okay, sorry. Uh, sorry again. Yeah, this is started with heart valve that I mentioned. So it looks like this to for heart valve replacement. Okay, in this in this kind of form. I think uh, Andy made the review, yeah, last semester. Okay, uh, that will be all for the introduction. So let's first. Start.